The Crown has always had a complicated relationship with the First Nations people it reigns over. As the longest ruling monarch, Queen Elizabeth, met with Indigenous Australians abroad and on their lands over multiple royal tours. No one will be able to suggest to me that Central Australia is a dead heart. But she was often shielded from the harsh realities of colonisation. In 1954, Yorta Yorta people living in abject poverty on the side of the road were hidden from the Queen's view during a visit to Shepparton on her very first royal tour. They cut down limbs off trees, branches off trees, and threaded them through the fence so that when she came past that area, she wouldn't see all the people camping there. I respect the Queen uh, for all that she's done, but I don't respect her for not acknowledging my people, what happened to my people, by her people. The Aboriginal rights movement gathered pace under Her Majesty's reign, and in the lead up to the Republic referendum, she hosted a contingent of Indigenous leaders at Buckingham Palace. It's a funny thing to feel a bit emotional about it. I think for the first time in our lives, we were treated properly as... Uh, uh, she treated us as human beings. But the 1999 referendum would ultimately fail, something Indigenous Australians are still grappling with. And I bear true allegiance to the colonising Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Senator Thorpe. The end of the Queen's reign comes as Australia is once again debating the place of Indigenous Australians in their own country, how they should be represented in the constitution and the halls of power, and what reparations should be paid for centuries of colonial harm. You know, it is this stolen uh, wealth that has been built on the backs of our land, of our people. And First Nations people are now looking to a new era under King Charles III, who assumes the throne amidst growing pressure on Commonwealth countries to properly honour the rights of their First Peoples. Dana Morse, ABC News, Canberra.